Hello, my name is Natalie Boko, and I'm honored to present to you the legendary Walter Court. In an era of poverty and scarcity known as the Great Depression, the people's lens on the world in the 30s were dark. The devastated, hungry, and poor provoked Court's passion for the surrealistic style of art and his love for abstract expressionism, portraying what this age felt like and stages people endured. He drew and painted for the people. My goal for this documentary is to firstly reveal Court's unseen and inspiring artwork, and secondly, an ode to his wife, Eleanor Court, who was his greatest muse and devotee. In Minnesota's Iron Range in 1902, Walter Court was born into extreme poverty. Midway through the 1920s, he enrolled at Milwaukee's Layton School of Art. Walter was a master at watercolor painting and drawing. His early watercolors were excellent, and in the late 1920s, they were exhibited at the New York Watercolor Society and the Chicago Institute of Art. In 1930, Walter Court relocated to New York City, joined the Communist Party, and contributed artwork to socialist periodicals like The New Pioneer. The renowned gallerist Julian E. Levy first came across Walter in 1933. After witnessing early surrealist works by his European contemporaries, Walter created surrealistic artistic methods. He opened the first American surrealist exhibition in the country. He displayed his work in 1936 at the Julian Levy Gallery in New York City, where he made a lot of noise with his fantastical gesso oil onboard paintings. Due to a dispute with Salvador Dali, another of Julian Levy's artists, Court departed the Julian Levy Gallery in 1940s, when his career had reached its pinnacle. Walter Court returned to Minneapolis, Minnesota after leaving New York City in the middle of the 1940s. After leaving New York City, he stopped taking part in art displays, which led his works to fall into obscurity. This painting is that of his wife, Eleanor Court, that was painted in the mid-1940s. It is real and abstract, and it has elements of surrealism and cubism that were similar to the works of Picasso in the mid-1940s. Here is a beautiful example of abstraction in surrealism. It is a painting of his mistress from the 1940s who was a nurse that took care of him. This painting has never been seen before. Untitled from the mid 1940s exhibits biomorphic forms and figures that dance from one point of the canvas to another. This right here is a painting from 1936 that is a classic social surrealism painting that reflects poverty found during the Great Depression. As you can see, there's many different characters that are depicted in this masterpiece. We have a man with a top hat that looks like a businessman and tons of other characters that look like they can be from different socioeconomic classes. I have found it fascinating to learn about Walter Cord's journey from his humble beginnings to becoming a prominent surrealistic artist in the United States. His artist development, involvement with socialist magazines, and his contributions to surrealism are quite noteworthy. Here we have a large painting from the 1940s that Cord gave to another New York artist. This features floating blankets that were equivalent to the surrealistic watches that Salvador Dali painted.
This painting is on an oil and gesso on panel painting. That was Walter Court's first surreal painting that was exhibited at the Watchworth Athenaeum in Hartford, Connecticut. The painting titled Salvation depicts hypocrisy with respect to the church. This masterpiece was exhibited in 1936 at the Julian E. Levy Gallery. This painting was also exhibited at the Julian E. Levy Gallery in 1936 and depicts the suffering of people from famine during the Great Depression. It is titled, Instrument of Poverty. Death of a Striker was done in 1935. It was exhibited at the Julian Levy Gallery in 1936 and it depicts a worker on strike walking into the fires of hell. Untitled, a mid-1940s painting that mixes abstraction with surrealistic forms and is noted for its brilliant colors. This painting is an excellent example of Walter Cord's talent as a colorist. It shows colors of yellow, different hues of blues and greens. This piece named The Evangelist was painted in 1936 by Walter Cord. Animal World was painted in 1943. It was a fixed dream that Court had, or perhaps a nightmare, in which all the animals looked like monsters. Court painted Animal World when he was hospitalized for alcoholism. Here I present Love on the Rocks, the last piece of art we have for Walter Court's video. This piece was painted in 1937 and represents the first painting of him and his wife. So it is a self-portrait and it depicts them relaxing on a lake. Eleanor and Walter Court are in the top left on the highest rock. I'm so grateful to have this opportunity to be able to do this for Walter Court and Eleanor Court and the man who made this all happen, Charles Sims. Thank you very much.